This is Breaking News from Las Vegas Review Journal. Sponsored by Michael Gaughan South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa. Good afternoon, I'm Jen Ah, coming to you live from the Las Vegas Review Journal studio. Now we're getting ready to take you live to the McCarran International Airport where airport officials and TSA officials are expected to hold a press conference this afternoon. They're expected to talk about new security and new technology at the security checkpoint. This conference is set to highlight some recent changes to security technologies in the Innovation Checkpoint. Innovation Checkpoint is a collaborative effort between TSA's Innovation Task Force and the airport that tests and evaluates emerging security technologies in a live airport security checkpoint environment. Officials are saying it's the first and only of its kind nationwide. Now this event is expected to start at around 2 o'clock this afternoon. This comes as McCarran International Airport comes back to life with passenger volume numbers trending upwards after COVID-19 restrictions halted most travel. Just the other week, the Review Journal reported that 2.9 million travelers passed through the airport's gates in April, a 13 percent uptick from March. Now, these numbers are still trailing behind 2019's numbers. However, as leisure and travel continues to improve, Clark County is open to 100 percent and will likely see more people traveling and going flying. Now, it looks like this event is about to start. Let's take a live look at the airport. It looks like it's just begun or they're getting ready there. Let's take a quick listen. Is, is this on? Yeah, I don't need it anymore. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope that you can hear me through my mask, as you can see, because we're uh, in the airport environment. We are required to wear masks. I thank all of you for wearing your mask and understanding as speakers when we're wearing a mask, we'll try to speak slowly so you can understand us. My name is Lori Dankers and I'm the TSA Public Affairs Manager for the state of Nevada. And I'm really happy to see all of you here today to come take a look at the reopening of our innovation checkpoint. Some of you might have been here in the fall of 2019 when we first unveiled this. We've made improvements so we wanna take a look at those improvements today. But before we do that, we're going to have some speakers talk a little bit about what the reopening of the Innovation Checkpoint means, not only to TSA, but to the airport and the Las Vegas community. And then, of course, we'll take some questions from you, and then we're going to go on a tour to show you firsthand and up close the innovations that we've made over the last few years. And, of course, during the pandemic, we never stopped working. We kept innovating, and that's what you'll see today. The names and spellings and titles of our speakers are in the papers that you have. It's a copy. The media advisory has all that information. There is a press release as well as a fact sheet with a little additional information on the technologies. Note that at the end of the fact sheet, there is a link to some additional photos that are on the cloud. But most importantly, there's an animation on there that you can use in your reporting. You download that. It's an approved um, animation of the x-ray image. Uh, from the CT scanners that we're going to take a look at. We're, we can't shoot or take pictures of that screen, but you certainly can use the one that's provided on the cloud. So please take a note, make note of that. That once again is at the end of the fact sheet. So I'd like to now uh, start the program and turn it over to our first speaker and uh, she'll take it from here. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie. I appreciate it. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to McCarran. Yeah, I'm Rosemary Vassiliadis, the Director of Aviation for the airport, and I am really, really thrilled for all of you to be here today. I have to begin with recognizing two very special guests that we have here on behalf of Senator Jackie Rosen, Brendan Vargas and Dane Hudson. Thank you so much for coming, and please give the Senator our, our uh, heartfelt thanks for her support and caring for, of this airport and our airport system. It means so much and it, it does volumes for us, so thank you. Well, this is a very exciting time for us here at McCarran. Each day we see more people flying here. Until now, they have primarily been leisure travelers that's coming to Vegas for fun um, or hopefully visit some family and friends. And as evidenced by the high demand, we have seen our parking garages that uh, fill, <clears throat> excuse me, fill up, so we know that more local residents are flying again as well. 
What we have been missing is the business traveler, conventioneers who historically fill our hotel rooms during the critical midweek periods. So I'm so happy to say that this week marks the start of their return, beginning with tomorrow's opening of the World of Concrete event at the Las Vegas Convention Center. This year has been incredibly difficult for the aviation and tourism industries. But after all the hard work that has gone on into slowing the spread of COVID-19, we're excited to reach this point in our recovery. I'm so proud to say Las Vegas is again leading the nation's travel resurgence. We see, <laughs> I, my mask and I do not get along, so I'm sorry. <laughs> we see this each and every day at our busy TSA checkpoints. The number of passengers screened at McCarran remains well above the national average. Last month alone, our checkpoint value, volume was nearly 80% of its pre-pandemic peak. We are well on our way into recovery at McCarran. And with the conventions coming back, it's only going to become busier. You know, McCarran traditionally serves a diverse clientele, from infrequent travelers to experienced business professionals and others in town for special events. This makes it the perfect airport to test TSA's newest technologies. And that's why we're reopening the innovative checkpoint today to provide a unique screening experience for the world of concrete delegates. For more than 20 years, Las Vegas has been honored as the world's top trade show destination. This innovative checkpoint is yet another reason why we will remain at the forefront of the return of conventions and business travel. By coordinating with both the TSA and convention organizers, we have ensured the Innovation Checkpoint will offer extended hours when World of Concrete concludes later this week. As we move towards a post-pandemic travel experience, there is still a lot of work to be, to be done. We must be at the cutting edge of security and also reimagine how to proactively address health as a safety measure. The technologies showcased here allow us to adapt so we could continue to provide the efficient and world-class customer experience that Las Vegas has always delivered. But of course, we do not do this alone. We are grateful for our partners at the TSA who share our deep commitment to customer service. Their investment at this checkpoint and the latest technologies will provide a smooth experience for our passengers and solid data for the TSA. We have always been grateful for our partnership and we look forward to the benefits this checkpoint will bring. So at this time, let me offer my sincerest thanks to Karen Burke, our, the TSA Federal Security Director for Nevada and ask her to say a few words. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Rosemary, for that introduction. And thank you, Rosemary, also for your partnership as well as your leadership during some very trying times with the pandemic, but now the resurgence of passengers really coming back uh, and feeling comfortable flying again. You know, we're one of the fastest recovering cities in the entire country. We quoted 80%, I'd say our system average is probably about 75% across all cities. But when you talk about Las Vegas and our peak days, we're over 90% back. And that's without a lot of international right now, which we hope will come back again soon. But it's a tremendous airport and we have worked closely together, TSA and the airport, to make sure we are ready to receive whoever wants to come to Las Vegas. Our doors are open, we can handle it, and we look forward to that. And particularly, as uh, Rosemary mentioned, with the conventioneers starting to come back. That's a really important business to Las Vegas, and with the world of concrete, this is kind of our first step on that comeback. Now, we've had a partnership with the airport for a long time, and we've always done testing of some equipment and programs, and the airport has always been very willing to help us. You might remember, some of you have been around for a while, we used to do the uh, AIT, which is, uh, you know, the imagery as you walk through so we can begin to uh, have a better ability to detect. And in addition to that pre-check, we also were the first airport to open pre-check lines for a national program. So both the AIT and the pre-check program have become nationally accepted and very popular. 
But I would tell you the crown jewel of test sites for TSA and for the future of aviation security is right behind me. This is absolutely the most superb and one of a kind, the only one in the country that has this kind of technology and the ability to do testing uh, to ensure that we make the right decisions, the right modifications to be able to have a great customer experience as well as a good environment for our employees as well. And of course the bottom line is we always want to have effective and efficient security itself. Las Vegas, as Rosemary said, is a great place to have the innovation checkpoint. We have high volumes. She described the diverse kind of passengers. We've joked before, if you can make it work in Las Vegas, you can make it work anywhere. We also have a great group of employees here who are very committed to taking the new technology, helping us figure out what works, what doesn't work, what's good for the passenger, what's good for the employee. It makes a difference when you have that kind of commitment from our employee workforce. But as important is really our commitment of our airport that is absolutely top notch when it comes to supporting security, as well as being able to uh, want to make sure that customer service is second to none. That's a very important goal that Rosemary has. So I'm excited to be able to share some of the new technology at the checkpoint with you. And in order to do that more effectively, I'm going to introduce Austin Gould, who is our AA of Requirements and Capabilities Analysis from our Washington, D.C. office. Hey, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Innovation Checkpoint. Uh, Rosemary and Karen both were very clear. They're excited about being here today, and I'm excited about being here today and for what the Innovation Checkpoint represents to TSA, to the travelers, and you know, to the traveling public. Uh, I'd like to start off with a couple of thanks. First off, to Rosemary Vasiliadis. You are a wonderful partner, Rosemary. And we kind of started this journey together about three years ago. And Karen and her team uh, from TSA here in Las Vegas were instrumental in bringing all this together. But I want to thank you for your leadership and partnership in this endeavor. And to Karen Burke, our federal security director here in Las Vegas for TSA, and your exceptional team, I could not be any happier with the way this has come together, with the way the checkpoint looks. Uh, there's all sorts of new technology behind me. We'll be talking about that shortly. That requires a significant amount of training by the, by the officers here at Las Vegas McCarran Airport, and they are more than willing to do it. You will find as we walk around and talk to them, they are every bit as proud of what they're doing here as Rosemary Karen or I are. So just at a really high level, why are we doing this here? We find at TSA that we can develop the best equipment in the lab, and it will work perfectly in the lab. And when you pop it, stick it in an airport somewhere and have real passengers try to use it and interact with it, you learn things that you can't always identify in the laboratory environment. So what this enables us to do is put new technology here in this checkpoint and use real passengers to give us feedback and you know, develop lessons learned on procedures, on technology changes that we might want to contemplate, and overall operational effectiveness. It is a wonderful, wonderful field lab for us at TSA. So just very briefly, you heard before that a lot's gone on in the last year, obviously, with COVID. Travel volumes are coming back. You heard Karen and Rosemary both talk about that. Uh, as we look at travel volumes going up, we, can, we need to leverage technology to the greatest extent that we can to get passengers through the checkpoint, provided the maximum level of security, providing the greatest throughput so we can keep the lines down, and then really enhancing the traveler's experience, making travel a more enjoyable experience lessening the burden of the screening process on the traveler. And the ACE checkpoint will help us do that. Behind me, you'll see four computed tomography machines, CT machines, similar to what you see in the medical environment. Those CT machines are the latest innovation in our ability to screen carry-on baggage. There's one of each model here, and we use them to assess the performance of the different models and develop requirements for the procurements that we'll do of CT technology moving forward. Another thing you'll see behind me are these automated screening lanes. They're the very long belts leading up to the CT machines. These are a wonderful innovation in that they allow people to divest their property for screening at the same time. Three or four people can line up next to each other, load a bin, and slide it in, and then move through screening. It's a much, much more efficient process. 
And then with respect to COVID, we did not stop working during the pandemic. In fact, we worked even harder. And behind me, you can see, I'm sure, all the plexiglass barriers that we put up, acrylic shielding. And the per reason for doing that was to keep the traveling public safe and to keep our officers safe. TSA had a fairly high number of COVID you know, cases because of our interaction with the public and the amount of interaction we have. And those acrylic barriers really helped enhance the, the uh, sanitization of our checkpoints. And then the last COVID innovation that I'll tell you about before we break off is one of the automated screening lanes actually has an ultraviolet light system installed in it in the bin return so that it will destroy any viruses on the bins as they process back to the passengers. We're just trying to do everything we can to reinforce to the public that traveling is safe again. Um, so that's what I have for you today. I want to again, thank you all for being here and I'm happy to take any questions. process back, can you explain what that means? When you said process back, that means I use it, I stick it in a thing and it somehow cleans it and it sends it back? There's an automatic bin return, exactly. So if you go to a checkpoint now without an automated screening lane, you'll see a pile of bins at one end and every now and then an officer will have to bring the bins back up to the front, hand them out to the passengers. It all happens automatically with these lanes behind me. And in that bin return mechanism on one of these lanes, there's an ultraviolet light system to again, sterilize the bins. Any other questions for Rosemary, Karen, or Austin? Um, you mentioned a lot of developments in terms of learning new technology. Uh, was anything uh, changed back? Was there anything that you realized that works so well you're going to maintain and keep doing it? So, I would say that TSA's security processes are very mature, and we did not change everything in response to COVID. In fact, probably the majority of our screening processes did not change. How the machines are adjusted, um, how the officers resolve alarms in the bags, none of those processes changed because of COVID. But again, what this facility here will enable us to do is, as you're suggesting, try new things, and if for some reason they don't work out or they're not optimal, then we can revert back to our normal processes, if that answers your question. What is expecting to use this equipment in other airports? I understand that it's a pilot product, right? So if it works, when are you going to be able to use it in other airports? Okay, that's a really good question. When are we going to see these you know, throughout the nation? So right now, these automated screening lanes are in many airports throughout the country. Um, and you will see more of them as we execute our procurement of the CT technology and deploy that nationwide. The CT machines, they're also in many, many airports as pilot you know, test units and initial procurement units. As we procure more of these, they'll be assembled with the automated screening lanes like you see behind me and distributed nationwide. I can't really give you a timeline on when they'll be everywhere. Um, obviously, they're very large units, so something like this won't fit in every airport and we'll have to make allowances for that but you will be seeing this technology coming out in the next several years. In regards to the, um, again, the UV light, is that unique and new to McCarran that you're gonna potentially roll out, or is that new? So it is, it is absolutely new, and it is something that, um, you know, the, uh, the TSA, working with the manufacturers, identified as a potential solution to enhance the cleanliness of the bins. It is not unique to McCarran right now. It's in a couple of other airports where we have test units out there, and we're assessing the effectiveness of it. Um, speaking all about why Vegas, why was Vegas chosen, the, the sample size that we have, the businesses that we go through, what's, what's unique about Vegas in terms of showing it? Well, I'll tell you what, why I think we chose Vegas, and then I'm going to probably turn it over to Karen Burke or Rosemary for a little bit more detail. Look at the space we have here. I mean, it is enormous. And we can really install all sorts of different combinations of equipment and try new technologies out here because of the space. This checkpoint does not always have to be used either. If you go to some airports, all their checkpoints are open all the time when the airport's open. This one, we can shut it down, have passengers use the checkpoints you know, up above us upstairs, and then turn it back on and divert the passengers down here when we're ready to go again. So I would say that's why, from my perspective, it was chosen. But Karen, I think you and Rosemary may have some more history. Well, the, you know, I mentioned. 
I had mentioned before uh, that we have really high throughput. High passenger volume is very important to testing equipment because we sometimes, as uh, Austin referred to, we do testing in the lab, but it's not enough to really test the equipment at a high volume and, you know, what works, what doesn't work. It's totally different when you have passenger after passenger nonstop all day long. And Las Vegas can do that. And the diversity of passengers really gives you a good opportunity to know what's going to work with families, what's going to work with the businessman, what's going to work with the tourist. So uh, there are not many airports that can really produce that. And as Austin said, the space is world class for what we have to be able to uh, provide a test environment that can give us the flexibility that's required. So it, it's the partnership. I, you know, an airport that doesn't care about security probably isn't going to want to do this. But McCarran is very committed, and we also are very committed to world-class customer service. And that's what some of this new technology is going to really help move forward. So there's a security screening above us already in place. Yes. This is an additional one? Yes. Who can use it? Who can use the one behind you? Well, it, it, we use it. Uh, we're usually open at least five days of the week, and it can be used for overflow, but our volumes get so high sometimes that upstairs just can't handle it. So we divert passengers down here at a variety of times. Usually it helps balance the flow and also gives us the test kind of environment that we want. So we're at Terminal 3, however, they have access to what other gates? They can go to D, right? Yes, they can go to D. They can go to all the D gates as, as well as, uh, you know, at this point, E gates aren't open, but we will be opening them at some point in time when the international traffic comes back. So it, it, it has a lot of diversity, which is, again, just excellent. Any other comments? I got one more thing, Karen. All right. I was remiss earlier, and for that I apologize. I wanted to recognize the exceptional staff and requirements and capabilities analysis that really helped put all this together. Uh, that's my team at headquarters. Uh, as Karen and Rosemary both said, this does not happen just anywhere. It is not very easy work, and I cannot be any more proud of the efforts that they did to get this place set up. All right, so if there's no more questions, we are going to start the media tour. So we will have somebody stay with your bags if you want to leave them for when we go into the checkpoint. Uh, feel free to also bring your tripod. We're going to have to all work together as we take a look at the equipment up front. And uh, we'll just get you all the way through that. So we'll start that in about three to four minutes. All right, so you're hearing from McCarran International Airport and TSA officials as they wrap up their press conference there. They're expected to take the media on a walkthrough to see in more detail those new security technologies. Now, officials spoke about, you know, this is a really exciting time for the airport with more visitors coming to Vegas. Now, they say that they're seeing more visitors, but they're still missing the business aspect. And so they're really looking forward to that with the World of Concrete event taking place this week. And they say with that, it's the perfect perfect time to test out this new technology, which features new CT technology along with ultraviolet lights that kill germs. And they say they have an automated system that really helps with efficiency at the security checkpoint. Now we'll have much more on the story online on our website, lvrj.com. And we'll have an update on all the day's events for you this evening on our 7 at 7 p.m. newscast. So make sure to stay tuned for that as well. You can download our free RJ mobile app to get news alerts sent right to your phone. And you can find us on all your st favorite streaming platforms Roku, Apple TV, and so much more. I'm Jen Ah. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We'll see you in a few hours at 7. You've been watching breaking news from the Las Vegas Review-Journal, sponsored by Michael Gaughan's South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa.